Imperius, the Archangel of Valor, is an angel of the high heavens and the de facto ruler of the Angiris Council. He has led the heavenly host to numerous victories over the forces of hell, but his pride and rashness has often caused recklessness that would ultimately cost him. As with all angels, Imperius was born from the Crystal Ark. He was among the Archangels and among the five who best represented the five virtues of Anu, in his case Valor. Alongside Matteo, Tyrio, Ario, and Ithario, Imperius formed the Angiris Council to lead angel kind. Over the years of the Great Conflict, Imperius throwed where other angels dared not. When the war turned in the heavens' favor, he was always the first to spearhead the most daring assaults into the burning hells. When hell's legion lay siege to the high heavens, it was Imperius who rallied his fellow angels to action, always the first to storm out of the diamond gates and charge headlong into the scattering armies of hell. It is written that in one of Imperius' invasions of hell, Solarion, his spear forged by Imperius in the heart of a dying star, felled so many demons that rivers of blood flowed throughout the seven realms of the great evils. By Imperius' own account, he and Tyrio saved each other's lives on the battlefield countless times. On one such battlefield, Imperius and all four other Angris council members took the fight to their demonic foes. Imperius bested a gigantic one-eyed demon by himself and the demon retreated to the fortress. Imperius sent the heavenly host after them. Tyrio urged caution, but Imperius ignored him and entered the fortress himself. Arriving in the structure's depths, he found his fellow angels dead and Diablo, Lord of Terror, waiting for him. The two came to blows, fighting each other to a standstill. Diablo commented on Imperius' rage while in battle, wondering out loud if his angelic enemy feared of what other angels would think of him, if they saw what he truly was. In doing so, Diablo questioned whether Valor was a little more than a manifestation of rage. Imperius responded that he feared nothing and continued fighting, and if anything, the taunt merely served only to enrage him further. It was at this point that the other Angris council members arrived, imprisoning the primeval. Ariel and Tyrio suggested capturing and imprisoning the defeated primeval, for if slain, Diablo would return in time. An enraged Imperius, however, declared that demonkind could only be dealt with through blood and slew the Lord of Terror. It was an act that Oreo declared sacrilege, and Diablo mocked the angels with his last breath. Nonetheless, Imperius' actions would later be immortalized in the Tristam Cathedral. Imperius was present at the Pandemonium Fortress when Ishkatu, a demon in the service of Diablo, led an assault on the fortress. Ishkatu wore the Pandemonium Loop, a ring given to him by Diablo that sowed fear amongst the angels defending the fortress. Imperius was unaffected by the loop, however, and hacked off Icastus' arm. Icastus fled the field of battle and the ring was lost. Imperius slew the demon prince Ignot, but not before the demon had slaughtered hundreds of angels. During the Sin War, the great conflict came to a sudden halt with the disappearance of the World Stone. It was eventually discovered that it had been stolen by renegade angels and demons led by the archangel Inarius, and that they had used it to create an entire world, Sanctuary. The renegades had even coupled with each other to create a new race, the Nephilim, and their descendants, humanity. Upon the discovery of this world and its people, the forces of the high heavens, intent on eradicating the abominations they beheld, burning hells and Edrim met in battle. That was only ended through the sacrifice of the Nephilim Uldician. Thus, the Angiris Council met to reconsider the fate of Sanctuary and its people. Imperius reaffirmed his belief that the demon spawn be eradicated, while Ario and Itarel voted that humanity be spared. Matteo cast no vote, so all eyes turned to Tyrio. Imperius expected that he would vote for humanity's annihilation, and in an event of a tie, the Angiris Council would carry out its original intent on scouring humanity from existence. Tyrio, much to Imperius' surprise and resentment, sided with humanity. Imperius, though irritated by how events had gone, nonetheless agreed to honor the Council's judgment and in return for Inarius, he made a pact with the demon lord Mephisto that Sanctuary and its inhabitants be free to choose their own path. 
The millennia following the Sin War were not kind to Imperius. With the pact made between heaven and hell, the great conflict was brought to a grinding halt, thus robbing Imperius of further opportunities to prove his valor in combat. The rift that Tyrael's actions had caused between them refused to close, and since that time it is said that Imperius became a highly legalistic and unbending tyrant. Decker K speculated that it was not his intent, but nonetheless, Imperius's actions caused disharmony to creep into the Angiris Council. With the departure of Matteo after the destruction of the World Stone, Imperius became the council's de facto leader. Twenty years after that event, events between Imperius and Tyrrell came to a head, as he demanded that Tyrrell account for his interference in the mortal world. The two traded blows, first verbal, then physical, until Tyrrell had Imperius at the tip of his own spear. Refusing to bow to Imperius' mandates, the Archangel ripped off his own wings and became mortal, in an act that Imperius declared to be sacrilege. Subsequently, Tyrrell fell upon sanctuary, cast out from heaven. Not long after Tyrrell's departure, Imperius found himself looking out from heaven to see Diablo before him, possessing the body of a mortal. Not fooled by the disguise, Imperius unleashed Solarion upon the Lord of Terror, revealing Diablo's true form. A form that was nothing like what Imperius had seen in the past, but something else entirely. A singular prime evil with the essence of all seven great evils in one body, Outmatch, it was not long before Solarion had been split in two and Imperius himself impaled. Despite his wound, Imperius managed to teleport away. What he couldn't do was prevent Diablo from destroying the Diamond Gate, giving entry to both himself and the forces of Hell as well. Despite his wound, Imperius nonetheless attempted to rally the angels to defend their home. As things turned out, Tyrion and his mortal allies had followed Diablo and met Imperius in the Silver City. Imperius blamed Tyrion and the Nephilim for Diablo's invasion and ignored Tyrion's insistence that, wounded as he was, he could not face Diablo again, and so he departed again for battle. At the Crystal Colonnade, Imperius encountered the Nephilim again. After destroying several demons, he warned him to leave, again. Iratriel and Oreo dissuaded him somewhat, but Imperius nevertheless threatened to kill the Nephilim should he see them again. And at the base of the Crystal Arch, Imperius and a group of fellow angels threatened to do just that, along with Imperius vowing to deal with Tyrio as well. However, the angels were too late to carry out his threat by this stage. Diablo had begun to corrupt the Crystal Arch, and the corruption of the source of angelic power caused Imperius and his fellow angels to fall incapacitated and drained of strength. Tyria was no longer bound to the Arch, however, and due to this, remained unaffected and was able to allow the Nephilim to continue onwards to the peak of the Arch. There, in the terrible fight that ensued, they were able to defeat Diablo and save all of creation from Diablo's wrath. Imperius recovered from Diablo's invasion, but remained bitter. Having seen heaven burn around him and his loyal followers perish, he was deeply impacted by Diablo's actions. Due to his pride, he could not accept that mortals had saved heaven from destruction. He allowed his shame and anger to feed off one another. Additionally, he refused to acknowledge Tyrio as the aspect of wisdom, a position he had taken after Diablo's fall, and mocked him for his inability to live up to Matteo's legacy. He, meanwhile, ordered Basil to create a group of angelic destroyers called Sicarai to ensure that Diablo's assault would never be repeated. Although Diablo's defeat had left demonkind largely leaderless, Imperius still viewed them as dangerous. Basil pushed Imperius to imprison Tyrio in the fist and judged him for his crime, but Imperius refused. In the midst of this dissonance, the council discovered the Black Soul Stone, which Diablo had used to become the primeval and now contained the essence of all seven lords of hell. The council debated over the stone's fate. Imperius wanted to shatter the stone upon the Hellforge, then launch a final sweeping invasion of the Burning Hells. Oreo wanted to seal the relic in a chamber of light and sound, while Ethereal was paralyzed by indecision and Tyrio remained silent. The dissonance between the angels blossomed, Imperius included. Eventually, Tyrion spoke. The Black Stool Stone had to be hidden in Sanctuary. It was a suggestion that Imperius and the other council members reacted to negatively. Passion flamed, and in a repeat of their actions not long ago, Imperius and Tyrion nearly came to blows. 
Tyrell refused to come to blow, but nonetheless exited the chamber. Outside he met Baslael, elf the Luminariae, and this time was not as successful in refusing to rise to the bait. Imperius intervened, ordering Basil to let Tyrael go. It was not in good grace, however, as Imperius mocked Tyrael as to his refusal to look into the Shalandar. Mocked him to whether he would join humanity if the council voted in favor of eradicating Sanctuary. Tyrael murmured in the affirmative and departed. Basil visited Imperius in his chambers a while later, confirming that Tyrael had gathered a band of humans in New Tristam. Imperius ordered Basil to retrieve Tyrio, giving him leave to kill his human companions if necessary. Basil questioned Imperius' decision to take Tyrio alive, but Imperius stood firm. He wanted Tyrio tried in the Ring of Judgment and made an example of, making the case against Sanctuary that much stronger when his mortal weakness was on display. Basil still questioned his orders until Imperius lost patience. Finally, the angel departed to do his master's will. Tyrael would later return to the heavens, but not at the hands of Baslael, but instead with a group of the Horodrim, intent on stealing the Black Soul Stone. In the midst of the chaos, Imperius found Baslael and Tyrael dueling in the Angris council chamber, with Baslael intent on killing rather than incapacitating his quarry. To save Tyrael's life, Imperius impaled his servant Utsolarion before flinging his body aside. Imperius declared that Tyrael would answer for his crimes, but not in a manner such as this. Tyrael accused Imperius of sending Sicariae to hunt him down, to which Imperius responded that he would have never condoned such an act, that he had ordered Basil to retrieve him alive. The pair were interrupted by Oreo and Itrael. Oreo announced that she had let the Horadrim depart with the Black Soul Stone, stating that already she could see the effects of its corruption fading. She called an emergency vote to decide whether Tyrael should be put on trial or whether he should be allowed to remain a member of the Angris Council and act as an ambassador between Heaven and Sanctuary. She voted for the latter, while Imperius voted for the former, and Israel sided with Ario. Imperius called them fools, holding Tyrael responsible for the lives that would be lost when the Black Soulstone paved the way for the return of the Prime Evil and Hell's resurgence. Tyrael was not swayed and declared he would depart, remaining with humanity. Imperius declared that if Tyrael departed under these circumstances, they would forever be enemies. Tyrael tossed Shaladar to Imperius and left, the last remnants of their brotherhood sundered. The Reapers attacked the Pandemonium Gate in Heaven, seeking to prevent the Nephilim from following Matteo into Pandemonium. In the aftermath of the fight, Imperius appeared, shocked that Matteo would dare attack his former brethren. That Matteo attacked his own kind shook Imperius far more than the genocidal reapers on Sanctuary prior to this. When confronted by the Nephilim, Imperius did not care whether Matteo wanted to destroy humanity, but knew he had to be stopped since, according to the Archangel of Valor, Matteo has grown sick and must be put down for his own sake. Imperius, however, did not have the heart to make such a move and knew that the task would fall to the Nephilim. Imperius led the Nephilim across the path of war to an abandoned siege camp where, from a cliff, the pair saw a battering ram that led to the front gates of the Pandemonium Fortress, which was the only way to breach it. Imperius instructed the Nephilim to gather three siege runes that would activate the battering ram from the battlefields of eternity. Before departing, Imperius warned the Nephilim that even if Mattel was stopped, he would not thank them for it. Imperius later alongside Tyrio, observing Matteo's body disintegrate into the ashes after the battle, before observing the Nephilim who has since become one with death.